What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and today I bring you the Battle of the Beasts, the Samsung Galaxy Note 5 versus the iPhone 6 Plus. Samsung even broke their own timetable in order to release the Note 5 a month earlier than the iPhone 6S. And that brings me to the point, iPhone 6 Plus is not a true competitor to the Note 5. That would be the iPhone 6S. But I still wanted to make this video to see how these phones stack up at this point in time. So I'm gonna be comparing the features, the specifications, the unique things, Things, basically the usability. I want you guys to get the best possible idea about which device is better suited for you and why. Samsung's Galaxy Note lineup is basically evidence of their arrogance. Steve Jobs always used to say nobody wanted a larger display. Why would you want a display that you couldn't touch all areas of the screen with one finger? Clearly he was wrong and Samsung was in the right. As a result, we now have the Note lineup, this massive phablet, this thing is so packed with powerful specs, it just defies logic but it works. People love them. And I want to see how it stacks up to the current phablet that Apple started copying Note with the iPhone 6 Plus. Then let's start with design. The Galaxy Note 5 features a completely new redesign. It's become iPhoneified. No more removable battery, no more SD card that you can take out. This thing is completely sealed off from your touch. And that's not to say it doesn't work. It's a beautiful design, very similar to the S6 Edge. It's like a reverse S6 Edge. The rear shell is actually curved on both edges, so it fits in the palm of your hand very well. The iPhone 6 Plus, you know, it's very familiar. It's an entirely metal construction. Although it is curved as well, it's just a little bit more slippery when it comes to holding it than the Note 5. What I do like about the Note 5 is that it's actually a smaller device. Although it does feature a larger display, the actual footprint of the device is smaller, and that is really neat. The Note 5 is the slightly thicker device, although it does pack a lot inside as a result of that thickness. It's a little bit lighter, but the actual size of the phone, when holding in the palm of your hand is smaller. So as you guys can see right here, it looks pretty similar to the 6 Plus and the button placement is very, very familiar. However, one thing I do like about the Note 5 is that the power button is a little bit down lower. So a phone of this size, it makes things easier when turning the phone on and off. And I need to give credit where it's due. Samsung actually takes risks with their Note lineup. Every single year they redesign it. They listen to their consumers what they want. Although they took a few steps back by removing the infrared blaster, by I'm removing that removable SD and battery, this thing looks gorgeous and Apple plays it safe and I don't blame them, but they do keep the same design for two generations, whereas Samsung always switches it up every single generation. So comfort wise, the Note 5 is certainly the more comfortable device. It's easier to use with one hand as well. Now when it comes to displays and outdoor usage, the OLED display on the Note 5 is slightly better, slightly more visible, but both are pretty much useless in direct sunlight. So let's talk displays. It's the most important aspect of any phone is what you interact with and the Galaxy Note 5 has a stunning one. Although it's not any different from the Note 4, it does have that 2560 by 1440p resolution with an incredibly sharp pixels per inch ratio. It's also an OLED display which makes it super efficient, very dark colors. As these pictures and videos do show you, the darker colors are more evident since the Galaxy Note 5 doesn't have a backlight. Of course, there are pros and cons for both of these technologies. However, the OLED is the better display. Apple even started using them on the Apple Watch, but they refuse to put them on the iPhone lineup. I don't really know why. However, the iPhone 6 Plus LCD will last longer. After five years, an OLED display's pixels usually start going out, but that's usually not a problem for anyone because they don't keep their phones for that long. So what's powering these monsters? Let's talk processing power. Samsung really stepped the game up. This thing is in a far different league than the iPhone 6 Plus. It's got an octa-core processor, which technically isn't always using all eight cores. It's only when you really need it. It's got four gigabytes of the newest DDR4 RAM, super efficient, and a Mali T760 GPU. The iPhone 6 Plus, again, I remind you, isn't technically competing with the Note 5. It's the 6S that will be on the same level. However, the numbers are very poor in comparison to the Note 5. Although the iPhone lineup always surprises me when it comes to raw performance instead of numbers, Apple does a very good job with optimization with the specs that they do have in their phones. So actually putting these guys to the test, I ran a Geekbench and the numbers did surprise me. Although the iPhone 6 Plus, of course, is only dual core. It's only those one or two cores that you're going to be using for everyday tasks. And the single core score numbers were higher on the iPhone 6 Plus. And that will make a considerable difference. It's only when you're doing something intense, you know, video processing, really intense gaming, that you're going to need multi cores and all of that RAM. So the iPhone 6 Plus, just day-to-day -day light usage might be a little bit quicker than the Note 5. But just take a look at these numbers. An octa-core processor with insane 
insanely higher numbers than the 6 Plus doesn't do all that much better as I thought than the 6 Plus. And that really surprises me. So when the 6S does come out, it'll crush this thing. And I cannot wait to see that. Now running the same applications on both of these phones, it was apparent to me that the iPhone 6 Plus does better loading in most cases, especially the bigger games. And I was surprised because this thing has such insane specs, but such little trivial tasks, the iPhone 6 Plus does a little bit better at them, like the Geekbench score showed us for the single core score. And that's evident here. So what I'm trying to tell you guys is that more power isn't always what you need. Sometimes it's the optimization for what little power you do have that counts for more. And I'd like to add that when it comes to graphical performance, the GPU used in the Note 5 is the same as the S6. So this GPU benchmark pretty much shows us that the 6 Plus outperforms the Note 5 GPU in some areas. And that's going to matter a lot when gaming. And overall, it's just interesting because the 6 Plus is a lot older, but does better in gaming. So that brings me to network. So the Note 5 is using the latest Bluetooth 4.2 technology. The iPhone 6 Plus is behind by two generations using 4.0. Both of these do support the latest 802.11 AC Wi-Fi standard. And the Note 5 actually has a future proofed LTE chip, which I thought was interesting. So they put in a Cat9 specification LTE chip that'll allow for over 600 megabits download speed while the iPhone 6 Plus can only support 150 at the moment. Now doing a Wi-Fi speed test, the Note 5 did outperform the 6 Plus. So using the phone at home on Wi-Fi, you'll have a better experience with the Note 5. When it comes to cameras, there is a huge divide between them. In fact, the Note 5 is double the megapixel count as the iPhone 6 Plus. Although both do perform great when it comes to video, you know, there's a definite advantage to having more megapixels. Although not always does it make the image quality that much better. The iPhone 6 Plus is a fantastic camera at night and unique to the iPhone 6 Plus is that true tone flash. So it allows you to get the perfect shade of flash every single time when taking pictures at night. Now the Note 5 can do 4K video and both do have slow motion. So both of these videos were shot in 1080p, although I gotta give it to the Galaxy Note 5. The colors are so vibrant. They may be a little bit not so true to life. However, it's just great. It looks fantastic. The colors just pop at you. And what I like about the Note 5 is that it has a very wide angle sensor so you can capture more without having to move your phone backwards further. The iPhone 6 Plus does a good job, but I'm waiting to see what the 6S will have to offer. The colors look a little bit gray, actually. Both have fantastic autofocus, so no complaints there. Now, when it comes to front-facing cameras, the Note 5 is miles ahead. Apple's got a lot of catching up to do. It's a 5 megapixel sensor on the Note 5 with a better aperture, and it's wide angle, so you can capture so much more inside of the camera. Obviously, it's going to be better quality as a result. So, of course, batteries are extremely important. Both are non-removable. However, the iPhone 6 Plus outperforms in the Note 5, even though it has a smaller battery. I guess the less power-intensive internals are to thank for that. The Note 5, however, has better features when it comes to battery. You can charge the battery from empty to full in just two hours. That's amazing. Also, you can trigger remote power savings, so if you lose your phone, you can keep it alive for longer. So, of course, both devices do have fingerprint sensors. It's just a tap to hold. No need for a swipe on the Galaxy, and this is the first time the Note series has a fingerprint sensor. And now there's Samsung Pay, which outperforms Apple Pay by a wide margin, and it's compatible with almost every single existing MagStripe payment system. Apple Pay is extremely limited. Not all retailers have it, but with Samsung Pay, that means you can pay at almost every single retailer. And when it comes to operating systems, the Note 5 launches with Android 5.1.1, latest version. The iPhone 6 Plus is currently on 8.4.1. In the future, Android Marshmallow and iOS 9 are going to add a ton of new functionalities, but that's for another discussion another time. Color-wise, the iPhone 6 Plus comes in just three colors. No rose gold yet. The Note 5, however, has a new silver titanium option, and of course, it comes in white, gold, and that dark blue. So now I wanted to talk about some things I liked and didn't like about both devices, as well as some unique features that each has. Now, starting with the Note 5, Samsung is waging a war on bezels, and they're certainly winning with the Galaxy Note 5. I love that the screen takes up most of the real estate on the front of the device. So why have needless bezels if you can make the phone just as comfortable to hold? Of course, the Note 5 also has the S stylus pen, which can be really useful, especially if you want to take notes real quick. The iPhone 6 Plus, however, has that True Tone flash unit, and a point I gotta make about the 6 Plus is the software update support. Every device gets the same update at the same time, unlike the Note 5, which depending on the carrier and model number, you'll get a software update maybe a year later, maybe a few months later, maybe never. The Note 5 has superior multitasking, that's for sure. It has split screen view, which the iPhones do not have, and it has a ton, I mean a slew of software features that you might 
might never even use, but it has so much great stuff like eye tracking. I mean, you can use the S Pen to hover over things, get some information on them. There's so many features. There's just too many to list software wise that the Galaxy Note 5 has. Of course, there's customization. It's an open software. You can do a lot more on it than you can on the iPhone 6 Plus, but I'm not really going to get into that. Battery life is better on the 6 Plus, but battery features and charging it with wireless charging. It's a faster charge on the Note 5. It's ultimately better. It makes up for the lack of battery life. I don't like that when you use the phone on a stable surface, it wobbles a lot more on the Note 5 because the camera is a lot more protruding, so it's definitely less stable. Something that doesn't necessarily matter but bothers me about all Galaxy devices is how uneven the ports are. Just look at how well balanced. Everything's exactly in the middle on the iPhone 6 Plus, whereas on the Note 5, everything is in a different location. It's higher up. It's not exactly even. That bothers me more than it should. So this is just some of the stuff that I personally liked after using these phones and didn't like so it's not like an end game for both of them because of these but these just are some areas to work on and some areas that have been done very well now when it comes to features guys there is so much more on the galaxy note 5 of course i urge you guys to wait until the 6s plus is released before making your decision but at this point in time it's clear to me that the galaxy note 5 has an advantage in almost every single way over the iphone 6 plus again wait for the 6s plus it'll do so much better now i can go on and on about all the exclusive features the Note 5 does have that the iPhone 6 Plus doesn't, but the truth is they're just not meant to compete. Now, when it comes to pricing, here's what you're looking at. The Note 5 varies wildly, depending, of course, on which carrier you have, while the iPhone 6 Plus has a pretty stable price on all carriers. So which device is better suited for you? Well, if you want something easy to use, very simple, of course, the 6 Plus is the way to go. The Note 5 is a little bit more sophisticated. The stylus turns it into a very great multimedia tool, something good for professional usage. If you take notes a lot, if you're a college student, it could definitely come in handy. The 6 Plus, however, is such a simple device to use. I mean, it can do everything that the Note 5 can't. It's just not as fast, not as great of a camera. It's just not there yet spec-wise, but the 6S Plus will be. So like I said, have patience. Wait until the 6S Plus comes out. Let's see what it can do compared to the Note 5. But at this point in time, the Note 5 is clearly the superior device. The Note 5 is pretty much for those who care about the cutting-edge technology, all the latest features the best specs. They're both definitely great devices, but the Note 5 just outperforms the iPhone 6 Plus, but not by as wide of a margin as I would have thought. The 6 Plus does keep up very well. So guys, there you have it. That's the Galaxy Note 5 compared to the iPhone 6 Plus. Hopefully, I gave you guys a pretty decent idea of how these phones compare and which one is better suited for you. I do appreciate you guys liking this video. Subscribe for more great videos if you haven't already, and be sure to check out the durability drop tests. I'm very impressed by what Samsung has done. Hope you made the right choice and wait for the success plus it will be worth it have a great day guys peace